This is the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Warframe video. So, just when I'm about to move on with my mess of Prime, you guys have gave me another reason to enjoy this Warframe. However, we are not going to talk about Mesa Prime solely in this video, as we are going to focus on the two new Archon Shards and why these are made for Endgame and Warframe. The Archon Shards I'm talking about is the Topaz and Emerald version. You can get these two new Archon Shards from the new Helminth Coalescent feature, which requires a segment which you can purchase from Bird 3 in Sanctum Anatomica after reaching the Researcher rank. Fuse red and yellow to form the Topaz version, while you can combine blue and yellow to form the emerald version of the new shards. The emerald version of the Archon shards focuses on corrosive and toxin. It has a buff that grants 30% damage bonus damage to toxin damage, a health recovery perk that procs when you damage enemies with toxin. There's also a buff that grants ability damage per enemy affected by corrosive, and the last one adds corrosion stack which we will discuss later. You can place the emerald shard into your Warframe and get the benefit of one of these buffs and judging from the stats, Warframes such as Saren and Grendel can benefit from all these buffs from the new Archon shards. The good thing though is it's not limited to these Warframes and the requirements to get these buffs can be proc while using weapons. All you need to do is mod for either Toxin or Corrosive and you get their respective buffs from the Emerald Archon Shards. The same goes with Mesa. If you mod Mesa with Corrosive in her Regulator Pistol, then you can take advantage of either the Ability Damage Increase or the additional Max Corrosive Stack. While the Ability Damage buff is tempting, the Max Corrosive Stack is the way to go as it's absolutely broken to the point that you get free full armor strip with just two emerald shard. Not a top forge version, but only two normal emerald emerald archon shard can fully strip the armor of enemies with corrosive. So how does this work? So you all know that the status effect of corrosive damage is corrosion. It temporarily degrades the armor of the afflicted target by 26% for 8 seconds. Subsequent procs further reduce armor by 6% of the original armor up to 80% armor reduction in total after 10 stacks, which is the maximum right now. With the emerald archon shard, you can give two additional stack per shard and based on on tests, you would only need 14 stacks to completely remove the armor of enemies. This is easy done by a regulator Mesa built for corrosive build, but like I have said, there are much broken synergies for the Emerald Shard that we will discuss later. Before we go to that, I would like to add the Topaz version of the Archon Shard. Most of the buffs in this Archon Shard focuses on blast or radiation. There's a buff wherein you can gain maximum health by killing enemies with blast damage. There's also a buff that grants you shield regeneration per enemy inflicted with blast status. And lastly, a buff that grants you ability damage per enemy affected by radiation. These have potential synergies, especially the radiation with the new Warframe Corvex, Carpet Oberon, or even Wisp with their fourth ability. However, I can't test it right now due to I'm lacking a lot of vial resources to remove and slot the Archon Shards into my Warframe. The most interesting buff and probably the most universal among the four of the buffs in the Topaz Archon Shard is the perk wherein you gain a max of 50% critical chance bonus after killing enemies affected by heat damage. The best part about this buff is it works like Harrow's Covenant or the Arcane Avenger and mind you, the 50% critical chance does stack with other Topaz Archon Shard. With the Top Forge version, you will get 75% critical chance bonus from the Topaz Shard and two of them grants 149% critical chance at max. And remember, this is an added of critical chance bonus, which means you get a chance to deal massive red crit numbers without investing in Riven mods, or you allow non-crit secondary weapons to do critical hits without any critical mods or arcanes in your setup. Now, this is insane with Peacemaker Mesa since putting two Topaz Archon Shards will give you 149% critical chance, which then be added to the 84% critical chance I have right now with one Talforge Crimson Shard and the critical delay mod in my Regulator Pistol. When I have the max 149% critical chance buff, my regulator pistols can do red crit numbers most of the time, and the secondary outburst with ceramic dagger trick is now just an additional setup to somehow complete the permanent full red crit build for my regulator pistol. In fact, you don't need to get the 12 times combo multiplier anymore, and you can just use the basic covert lethality and corrupt charge to get initial combo. Then use another melee weapon such as the Furax to also equip the amalgam mod that grants fire rate bonus to your regulator pistols. The only problem with the new top has shards critical chance buff is that the way you can acquire the full stack might take a while since it seems like it won't give you the exact 1.5% critical chance stack per enemy killed that's affected by heat damage. I have tried a couple of things, even using the companion trick to group enemies with Nautilus Cordon Precept and added just heat status in my Hellstrom, but it got the same result as killing enemies with my heat modded Peacemaker build. Stacking the critical chance buff would take a couple of minutes even if you have a, a companion setup that can proc heat rapidly or a weapon that has heat element on it with high status chance. At first try on this 
build in public queues. The mission just ended and I wasn't able to stack even 40% of the critical chance from the Topaz Archon Shard. The best use for this Topaz Peacemaker would probably be survival or any endless missions wherein you can stack the full critical chance buff for Mesa. On the other hand, the Emerald Archon Shard is just a godsend for Mesa, especially against armored enemies. You might say that there's no need for stacking corrosive right now since we got full defense strip with the helmet system and Emerald Archon Shard only strip armor and not shield, so it's not for universal use. Well, I think you are wrong there as most of the missions in the game that are worth spending countless hours farming stuff happens to have enemies that has high armor instead of high shield values. Take, for example, the Steel Path Conjunction Survival wherein most players farm for Thraxplasm, steel, essence, and resources. The Thraxplasm will be used to acquire arcanes from Archimedean Yanta and you can sell a max arcane to other players for platinum. Every week you can sell one max arcane if you choose to or you can sell more than that as there's no limit to how much Thraxplasm you can acquire and trade in Warframe. This makes it a farming mission and most of the enemies are here are heavily armored. Now if you want to deep dive and do hours of conjunction survival, you would need something to strip the armor of these enemies so you can kill them fast. In the case of my Mises Peacemaker build, which happens to have two Topaz Archon Shard and two Emerald Archon Shard at the moment, this means that not only that I can red crit at longer rounds in the mission, but I gotta strip the armor of the enemies with 14 stacks of corrosive and leave them vulnerable to viral damage, which I happen to also have with my nourish ability with the red crit and corrosive stacking setup. It will make even special units become trash mobs when hit by Mesa's Peacemaker. The good part about this is that it's not just limited to one Warframe as it's more devastating with a secondary setup. Topaz Archon Shard's critical chance only works with secondary while the corrosive stacking of the Emerald Archon Shard works universally to all weapons and abilities. Right now I think the meta will be two Emerald Archon Shard to get the 14 corrosive stacks and at least two Top Forge Topax Archon Shard for the 149% increased critical chance. In terms of secondary, I tested it with the Compressa and the additional max corrosive stack coming from the Emerald Shard works perfectly. The Compressa is a high burst pistol that has insane status chance, allowing you to proc multiple status at the fastest time possible. With this, you can stack corrosive within seconds, and you can see enemies with high armor being naked and vulnerable to viral damage. Because of the Compressa, I realized that it might be worth trying secondary weapons with high fire rate and high status chance to also proc the, the critical chance buff from the top high shard. There are a couple of beam secondary weapons I have tried, such as the Cuva Nucor, the Tenet Cycron, but none comes close to Sentient Surge Okukor. As you all know, the Okukor has this augment now called Sentient Surge, where each target eliminated refills the Okukor's magazine. In addition, status chance and critical chance are increased for each tendril active. The critical chance and status chance bonus increases up to 240% each and is additive to other crit chance and status chance mods. When you have this mod, then mod your Okukor with a corrosive and heat build with all the galvanized mods, and last Lastly, pair it with the two Tau Forge Topaz Shard and two Emerald Shards, the weapon turns into the ultimate red crit melting machine. It's madness because not only you can do this in your Mesa, but you can also use this with your favorite Warframe and then equip the Archon Shards needed, then use OQ Core with the same exact mods that I have shown you. This really opens up different synergy just like the farming Necros I have using the Sentient Surge OQ Core. By adding the Archon Shards, I can melt enemies with my Necros and then farm resources while using the Amalgam Ripkes mode that proc score, dismember enemies, and has a chance to drop more loot when Necro's Desecrate is active. This is also a great synergy with Wisp and it will be madness with the, the fire rate buff along with my Rorb that it increases the overall damage of the setup. However, I would highly advise having Arcane Pistolier in the build as the fire rate buff of Wisp can drain the OQ Core's ammunition in seconds. You can easily land headshot kills with this secondary because it's a beam weapon and you can proc the ammo efficiency buff from the Arcane, allowing you to keep the sentient surge buff of the weapon. You can also use this with a Mesmer Skin Revenant and tons of possible Warframe synergy. Honestly, after the changes to the Red Tau Forge Shard recently and the new Archon Shards added in the game, I am finding awesome synergy that makes me want to play Warframe every day again. It's really hard for an old player to be interested in Warframe every time, but the new Archon Shard system makes it possible for me to enjoy the game again with the crazy combinations I can look forward every week. With the new Archon Shards, new mods, new items, items that the Whispers in the Walls update, I feel alive again and as a Warframe player, and I thank Digital Extremes for bringing such an impactful update this year. So that's all about it. I hope that you find this video entertaining and informative. I hope to see you again in, in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.